OK, so each of these vectors I've written in component form, and I want to write them instead in magnitude direction form. So for each one, I'm going to draw a diagram, work out the magnitude, work out the direction. So let's have a look at the first one, A. So we've got 2i plus 13j. So that would be a vector travelling in this direction that would be going, so for a right angled triangle, would go 2 along and 13 up. So I can easily work out the magnitude of this vector by square rooting 2 squared plus 13 squared. So square root of 2 squared plus 13 squared is square root of 173. And the angle that this will make with the positive x axis, well, with the x axis, is that angle there. Okay, so let's call that theta. Then theta is the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. So the inverse tan of 13 over 2 is 81.3 degrees to 3 sig fig. So we would write this one as root 173 comma 81.3 degrees to 3 sig fake. Okay? So that would be number one. Okay, so if we look at number two, so B equals minus 7i plus 6j. So minus 7i, so we're going back minus 7, up 6. So something like this, Draw a right angle triangle. So we've got 7 and 6. If I draw in the x-axis, I'm going to want to find that angle. So the length of B, the magnitude of B, will be equal to the square root of 7 squared plus 6 squared. So square root of 49 plus 36. So root 85. And this angle... So if I call that, uh, let's call that phi. Uh, so phi is the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, so 6 over 7. So inverse tan of 6 over 7. So 40.6 degrees to 3 sig fig. So theta, the angle I want, is 180. Take away that which is 139 degrees to 3 sig fig. So as long as it is clear on your diagram as to which angle you're considering, we've got root 85 as the magnitude and 139 degrees as the angle. OK? Right. So, number three. Uh, C equals minus 20i, take away 3j. So minus 20i, so going back along that way and then down. So it's going to be a vector that looks something like this. Right angle triangle. So 20 along in the, uh, back along the x-axis and 3 down. Okay. Now, as for the x-axis and the direction vector, I'm going to work out that angle there, OK? So, let's consider this. Um, the length of C is going to be the square root of 20 squared plus 3 squared. So, square root of 20 squared plus 3 squared. So, square root of 409. That's the magnitude. Now, as for the direction, I can work out that angle there. OK, so let's call that uh, angle phi. So phi, that's the opposite. That's the adjacent. This will be the inverse tan of 20 over 3. So inverse tan of 20 over 3 is 81.5 degrees to 3 sig fig. 
okay? So that theta, the angle that I want, will be 90 plus phi. So add 90 onto that, so we get 171 degrees to 3 sig fig. Okay? So be careful with the um, notation that we're using, okay? So some of you might think, well, okay, because we've got 171 degrees there, how we write this, if I'm going to be, if I wrote down these two vectors, I would insinuate that the 171 degrees is being measured the same way as the 139 degrees, okay? So that can cause a bit of a problem, okay, if you look at it that way. That's why the diagram is so essential. If you wanted to measure them all the same way, going round um, anti-clockwise, so if that's not the theta that you want, and you changed it so you're looking at that angle instead, then what you could do is you could say, so that we're all consistent with all of these problems, what you could do instead is say, well, theta, the angle that we want, is going to be 180 plus 90 take away the phi. Okay, that'll leave me with the theta that I want. So, inverse term 20 over 3, quickly do that on my calculator again. 180 plus 90 take away phi is 189 to 3 sig fig. Now, obviously, right, if we'd already calculated the 171, we could just do 360, take away that, and we get to the 189. Okay? So, it really depends on which way you're measuring that angle, okay? Now, you could, as a, as a third alternative here, uh, depending on the question, identify that angles that go around this way up to 180 degrees are positive, and ones going that way around are negative. Um, people doing further maths uh, and working with the Argan diagram will uh, test to that as a way of doing it. Once again, the diagram is key to this, as to how you're showing which angle you're measuring it, if it hasn't already been identified. Okay, so let's go on to number four. Spend a lot of time on number three. Let's go on to number four. So we'll try and remain consistent, okay, so that all of these uh, can be inferred the same way. So D equals 16i, take away 14j. So we're going along 16 and down 14. So something like a vector going down that way. So going 16 along and 14 down. Okay, here is my x-axis. And if I wanted to work out the direction, if we're going to be uh, going the same way as those three, I would need to find that angle there. So I can work out the length of the vector using Pythagoras, so that's a right angle, 16 squared plus 14 squared square rooted, which is 2 root 113. Okay, now as for the angle, if we work out that angle there, that phi, Phi is the inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent, so 14 over 16, which is 41.2 degrees to 3 sig fig. So theta, the direction, will be 360, take away phi. So 360, take away phi, is 319 degrees to 3 sig fig. Okay, so that is how we can write vectors in magnitude direction form.
draw a diagram to make sure it's very clear to the examiner what you're doing, if one already hasn't been drawn.